Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. I met with children ranging between the age of five months to 17 years old. On Monday morning, when we arrived at the facility, there were more than 350 children detained there in an adult holding facility that was designed for just over 100. The children who we interviewed last week were dirty, hungry, sick, scared, and many of them had been detained for days on end, for weeks on end, some nearly a month. Many of the children had been held incommunicado without an opportunity to call their loved ones, and their loved ones have no idea where they are and how to get their beloved children back. Nearly every child in that facility has family members in the United States who are eager to get their children back, and the children want to be with their loved ones too, but the the length of detention has just been too long. There is a federal law that was passed unanimously by both houses and signed by President George W. Bush, which provides for detention in Customs and Border Protection facilities for children for not longer than 72 hours. Okay, so that's one of the attorneys who was able to get in there. That's Alora Mukherjee, and uh, she she is beside herself she literally is beside herself uh, because you know while the trump administration continues to separate children from their families and nobody seems to care anymore then they seem to care that the president raped E. Jean Carroll. Do you know what I mean? I mean, can, can, can you believe the condition we're in here where the president yesterday, I mean, honest to God, what, what, what you have here is, you, does everybody remember E. Jean? Ask E. Jean. I do. I remember her. She was an advice person. And, you know, the precursor to MSNBC was a channel called America's Talking. I don't know how many remember that. It's where Geraldo, it was during the OJ uh, trial. And, uh, you know, you had uh, Charlie Gibson and, uh, you know, um, uh, Geraldo and E. Jean and all the and you had all these shows and it was it was before uh, MSNBC actually became MSNBC and E. Jean Carroll had an, an advice show called Ask E. Jean. Well, E. Jean Carroll at that time, uh, you know, it was like what uh, the '90s, and she was in her mid fifties, I guess. She was a really good looking woman. She was very tall, very skinny, very blonde, very, uh, you know, funny. She used to be a writer for Saturday Night Live, okay? And she parlayed uh, that humor of hers into being an advice columnist, okay? I I think she wrote for Vogue. Anyway, she's in a Bergdorf Goodman, and uh, they're going through the revolving door, and she sees Donald Trump, and Donald Trump apparently puts his hand inside the revolving door. I don't know if you've ever been in a revolving door, but if you do that, you can't move the door. And uh, so he stops the revolving door from revolving, and then uh, he gets inside and he says, aren't you the advice lady? And she said, yeah, aren't you the real estate guy? And he says, yeah, you know, why don't you help me out? I'm trying to buy a gift for a woman. And he asks her how old she is and all this stuff, and she says, oh, I'm 52. And he goes, God, you're old. Because he was like 50. Oh, you're old. And uh, then he says, no, come help me. And, and so he, she says, well, what do you want to buy? Why don't you buy her a purse? No, nah, I don't want to buy a purse. Why don't you buy a hat? No, I don't want to buy a hat. Takes her to the lingerie department in Bergdorf's. Now, Bergdorf's is a very cozy uh, but very large department store in Manhattan. It's super, super expensive. Really, really tough. My sister used to sell makeup at the clinique counter in Bergdorf, okay? And you can't, as a worker in Bergdorf, you can't afford anything in Bergdorf. I think like the opening price for anything in Bergdorf is like $1,000, okay? Anyway, so she, he takes her to the lingerie department. There's no one in the lingerie department. It's nighttime, right? And it's like eight o'clock. And so he, he picks out this, uh, you know, see-through bodysuit, whatever, and he tells her to try it on. And she goes, no, you try it on. And he says, no, it looks like it's your size. And she says, oh, no, it matches your eyes, because she's, you know, funny. 
And one thing leads to another, and she says, uh, okay, come in the dressing room and you try it on. And she thinks it's a joke and it'll be funny and blah, blah, blah. So he agrees to go in the dressing room and try it on for her. And as soon as the door closes, he slams her head up against the door and he unzips and he pulls down her tights and against her will, he rapes her. And no one cares. It's not even in the newspaper. I mean, if it's in the newspaper, it's like on the 16th page. And the president of the United States is separating children from their parents. He's being accused of actual rape. And everybody in this country is either not surprised, not shocked, or they're cheering for a rapist who abuses children. You go figure this out. You talk about reparations, man. If there's one ounce of justice left in the world, all of these children and the families who are being abused at these facilities will at least one day be compensated for their suffering. So not only are we not moving forward on reparations for past sins, which aren't even over yet. Look at Buttigieg over the weekend in the South Bend. The past is not really the past. And now we got new, vast new numbers of sins that are going to require some form of atonement by this country because karma is a bitch. This is crazy. Crazy. And I don't think that Trump is going to be the one that does the atoning. He will be comfortably ensconced in Trump Tower Moscow calling the concierge to remove some kind of a soaking wet mattress. Babies left to take care of babies because the only people that are in charge are guards. That's it. That's all you got. And the guards are they're beside themselves, so they're ordering kids to take care of younger kids. So we heard reports of children as young as six months old, one year old, two years old, three years old, who are being cared for by children unrelated to them in these holding cells and in these pens. And when I say the children are older than them, we're talking about children who are seven years old, eight years old, nine years old. They're being ordered by the guards to care for the younger children. And it leads to all the problems you can imagine because these young children are not equipped to take care of toddlers. One of my colleagues, Warren Binford, was interviewing an eight-year-old child who was tasked with caring for a two-year-old. And when Warren asked whether the child, the two-year-old, needed diapers, the eight-year-old said no, and the child, the two-year-old, promptly peed on the chair that the child was sitting on. These are not safe and sanitary conditions. There was an influenza outbreak at the facility. Flu and lice were spreading. The children don't have access to an ability to wash their hands with soap. Most of the children who I spoke with had not brushed their teeth once for weeks on end. Is this normal? Is this acceptable? Is this our system? Is this how it's supposed to look? And is this how it's supposed? No, no, it isn't. This is a chaotic mess created by this president. These kids are not supposed to be separated, number one. Number two, a quick phone call uh, would actually solve a lot of these issues because these kids have relatives that live here who could take them and care for them pending their parents' asylum hearing. Or we could send judges down to the border to process things. We could send teams of judges down or we could send caseworkers there to manage the cases of these children who would have, I don't know, a telephone. For some reason, the guards in Border Patrol don't have telephones. Isn't that something? Nobody seems to have, uh, you know, a portal Uh, an internet portal, a database of who these kids are, or even though some of them have their parents who live in the United States phone number in marker, and since they can't bathe, I guess it's still there, 
that says, call my aunt, call my uncle, call my mother, call my grandma. Here's her number. She lives in Arizona. He lives in Florida. She lives in uh, New Mexico. You know, this is so avoidable. This is so disgusting. This is so ugly. And it is, just like Mark Morgan said, to send a message. It's a deterrent, right? So stay in your country and be slaughtered. You know, this president, I swear to God, I swear, he's, he, he, today he was threatening to obliterate Iran. He just, he just knows how to create chaos. He has no clue how to solve any problem. And I guarantee you, whatever your problem is, he isn't the least bit interested in solving it for you. He's interested in two things and two things only. And that's making you afraid of it and getting you to vote against it. That's it. This man does not care about anybody's problems but his own. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.